It's time for another Wrestle Planet news update as WWE needs John Moxley and Andrade has tried to quit WWE. All that and more coming up in today's video, but first. Let's quickly take a look at the Wednesday Night War ratings for this week as AEW once again came out on top of their competition. AEW drew an overall viewership of 743,000 which is a 20% drop from the AEW Revolution Go Home show. In the key demo they got a 0.32 rating which is a small drop of 3%. NXT averaged 691,000 viewers which is basically identical to last week although they did drop 10% in the key demo to a 0.18. This sees the scores now at 70 to 1 in the key demo in AEW's favour and 60 to 9 in the overalls. And we have an update later on in the video regarding NXT's move to Tuesdays which could end this war but first let's take a look at our next story. In a recent interview with Brandon Walker, Jake the Snake Roberts spoke of his desire to have a couple of matches in AEW. Now aged 65, he is of course the manager of Lance Archer. Following Tully Blanchard's recent appearance in a six-man tag match teaming with FTR, Jake joked of his envy for Tully and said, it's still difficult. I still want to do more and I haven't got it through my thick skull that I'm 65. Even now and then, it'll start bubbling. You've got a couple of matches left. I'm still not ruling it out. It pissed me off to watch Tully Blanchard wrestle. I wanted to jump him when he got to the back, but he was out there signing autographs. I was so proud of him. Roberts did in fact get physical at AEW Revolution, hitting Ethan Page with a short armed clothesline before being super kicked by Penta. It will be interesting to see if Roberts does in fact have another match in him, but I do think this is unlikely at this point, although who knows. On February the 22nd, AEW announced that the Dark Order's Anna J will be out for 6 to 12 months with a shoulder injury. This injury saw her being removed from the Women's Eliminator Tournament, replaced by her friend Ty Conti. We now have an update regarding her progress in recovery and she tweeted, Hi everyone, I just got out of my shoulder surgery and all is well. For the next two days I will most likely sleep and eat only ice cream and soup, but after that I will be working my ass off in any way I can. Thanks for all the support and well wishes. We still have no scheduled return date but it's good to see that her shoulder surgery went as planned and let's all hope to see Anna J back in the ring as soon as possible. It was recently reported that NXT will be moved to Tuesday nights due to the USA Network bringing in Wednesday Night Hockey to the network. This would ultimately end the Wednesday Night Wars between NXT and AEW. This move is now in doubt with USA's parent company NBC locked in negotiations with the NHL. The two parties are said to be far apart on money and are currently unable to find a fee that works for both sides. If a deal is not made, USA will would no longer be needing to move NXT. It could still happen if the network wants to hold NXT without competition, which would inevitably lead to higher ratings for both shows, but it's currently not known as to whether that is a possibility. For the first time since AEW Revolution, somebody from within the company has addressed the dud explosion as a mistake on the company's part. Kenny Omega released a statement to the Wrestling Observer and said, yeah, it was really deflating to do so much preparation, test the explosions, have them be impressive in rehearsals, and then have it be something that was so much different to what was promised. It made me appreciate everyone who worked hard and did their part even more though. But like you said, we really wanted to have a good one, and we added real barbed wire to help with the feeling of danger, so we really risked a lot. Again, I loved the match, glad we did it, sucks about the finale. It's good to see AEW finally publicly address the spot as a botch. And quickly before we move on, and hopefully this will be the last time I talk about this in a video, but after my recent few videos, there seems to be some confusion as to why AEW were being criticised in the first place. It's not the fact that there was a botch or that they turned it into a story. On screen, they've done all the right things. The issue is with the way that they dealt with it in the media call after the pay-per-view. Outside of kayfabe, they should have said they effed up and that they had a plan to fix it. Instead, 
they blamed the fans and their expectations. Tony specifically said, I don't know what people really wanted, which implies that the explosion went to plan. The reality is AEW's plan was to have a bigger explosion as confirmed by Kenny Omega in his statement. So don't blame the fans for expecting more, just admit that it was a mistake. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense so I don't have to have this conversation 100 times in the comments anymore. But yeah, as I say, let's move on from this and get to our next story. Last October, WWE filed for a trademark for the name Dean Ambrose. Of course, Dean Ambrose was the name John Moxley used during his WWE run. WWE's application hasn't gone quite as smoothly as they would have liked and now required the permission of John Moxley himself in order to complete the process. And before we continue, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you drop a like down below as it helps me out a lot. And why not subscribe as we head towards 10,000 subscribers? But let's get back to the video. WWE will require written consent. WWE did previously hold the trademark, but it was cancelled in August of 2020. They had plenty of time to renew it, but decided not to. They have now decided to apply for it again, which required a new application, which has caused all sorts of issues. It's not known if the former Dean Ambrose will give WWE this written permission, especially considering how critical he was of the company following his departure in 2019. And finally, former NXT champion Andrade has requested his release from the company. He was called up to the main roster in April 2018 before winning the WWE United States Championship in 2019 on a house show in Madison Square Garden. However, since losing the title, he hasn't exactly been featured as the top talent that he should be. Fightful Select are reporting that his initial push was Paul Heyman's decision, which explains why he hasn't been used to his full potential since Heyman was removed from his executive role. Before his time in NXT, Andrade wrestled under the masked gimmick of La Sombra, which is Spanish for The Shadow. He wrestled mostly for CMLL in Mexico whilst also having a five-year run in New Japan at the same time. He was a member of the popular LIJ faction in both CMLL and New Japan alongside the popular Tetsuya Naito. Eventually, he was unmasked following his loss to Atlantis in CMLL in a mask versus mask match and this followed his decision to join WWE. Following the news that Andrade had requested his release, his former LIJ stablemate Bushi tweeted an old photo of the group. Andrade, who now seems to be going under the name LI Dolo, subsequently liked the photo. Time will only tell if this is a sign of things to come, with LI Dolo heading back to New Japan and CMLL. Considering New Japan's relationship with AEW, I'd absolutely love to see Andrade show up on Dynamite. Although AEW have recently received some criticism for their signing of former WWE talent, I think Andrade has the potential to be a top, top main eventer in both companies. He's only 31 years old and hasn't even reached his peak and has everything you need to be a star. As of this writing, Andrade's request has reportedly been denied, which is obviously expected, and it seems he may have to wait out his contract in order to get his win. There is of course a chance that he could be moved back to NXT in order to give him something to do and potentially convince him to stay with the company. But with that said, if he did leave, would you like to see Andrade head to AEW? Let me know in the comments down below. 